Hello, my name is Caroline Adcock and I'm a meteorologist at the National Weather Service office here in Nashville, Tennessee. Today, let's talk about the different types of weather instruments that meteorologists use every day. First, a weather instrument is a device that measures a weather-related condition such as temperature, wind, or pressure. Our weather instruments work to not only give us an idea of the current weather conditions, but they are also used to produce a reliable weather forecast. A thermometer is an instrument that me measures air temperature, otherwise known as how hot or cold our atmosphere is. One type of thermometer that you may be familiar with is an enclosed glass tube that has a type of alcohol inside of it that is often a red dye. As temperature increases, this liquid expands up the tube, indicating a warmer temperature. As the temperature decreases, the liquid contracts towards the bottom of the tube, indicating a colder temperature. Another type of thermometer is a digital thermometer. This type of thermometer uses a small electronic circuit and a resistor to tell the temperature. When the temperature changes, this electrical circuit notices the differences from the resistor. This change in resistance is then converted into a change in temperature, which you see as a digital reading on the screen. In the United States, we typically measure temperature on the Fahrenheit scale. On this scale, 32 degrees Fahrenheit indicates the point where water freezes and 212 degrees Fahrenheit is the point where water boils. Other parts of the world will often measure temperature on the Celsius scale. On this scale, zero degrees Celsius is the freezing point of water while 100 degrees Celsius is the boiling point of water. An anemometer is an instrument that measures wind speed. A lot of anemometers that you may have See, that you may see have cups attached to them. The cups catch the wind as it blows, and the faster the cups rotate, the stronger the wind is. The anemometer counts the number of times these cups turn, and it uses that to calculate the wind speed. Because the wind speed is usually not consistent because of the lulls in the wind or the period of stronger wind gusts, wind speed is usually av an average over a short period of time. The most common way of measuring wind speed is miles per hour, but mariners and pilots will often refer to wind speeds in units called knots. A wind vane is an instrument that indicates the direction the wind is blowing. You may see a wind vane that looks like a compass, or you may see a version of this that just looks like a giant sock. As the wind blows, the wind vane rotates horizontally, and since it's longer on one end than the other, it will always point in the direction that the wind is blowing. This is fairly a simple instrument that just tells you the wind is coming, if the wind is going to come from the north, the south, the east, or the west, or any other direction in between. A barometer is an instrument that measures atmospheric pressure. This instrument can tell you if the pressure is rising or falling, and this is a great indicator of what type of weather conditions we can expect. Rising pressure indicates sunny and dry conditions, while falling pressure indicates stormy weather. A hygrometer is an instrument that measures humidity. The more moisture that is present in the atmosphere, the higher the humidity is, and the more humid and muggier it will feel outside. A humidity value of 100% indicates that our atmosphere is holding as much moisture as it can. How much moisture can our atmosphere hold is very dependent on air temperature. Cold air cannot hold as much moisture as warm air can. A rain gauge is an instrument that measures specific rain, rainfall over a specific period of time. As rain falls, it collects in a rain gauge. We typically measure rain in inches with the higher numbers indicating a lot of rain has fallen. A weather balloon measures weather conditions high up in the atmosphere. Meteorologists at the National Weather Service launch weather balloons twice a day, every day, uh, in almost all weather conditions. We will launch weather balloons uh, more frequently in times of active weather, such as hurricanes, severe weather. The instrument tied to the end of the weather balloon is called a radioson. This radioson measures temperature, humidity, pressure, and wind speed, and as well as the direction to give meteorologists a vertical profile of the atmosphere at that time. From this, we can get a sense of how unstable our atmosphere is, how much moisture is present, or even if the conditions are favorable for tornadoes. 
Satellites orbit the Earth and are used to photograph our atmosphere, and this is very important, a very important observational tool for meteorologists. There are two types of satellites, polar orbiting satellites and geostationary satellites. Polar orbiting satellites cons constantly orbit the Earth in a north to south orbit, passing close to both of the poles. Because the Earth's rotating, polar orbiting satellites get a different view from each orbit. Geostationary satellites are located over 22,000 miles above the Earth's equator and spin at the same rate as the Earth. Because of this, these satellites are able to focus on the same area and take a picture of the Earth at the same location every 5 to 10 minutes. During times of severe weather, these satellites can be commanded to take images every 30 seconds to a minute and focus on a smaller area. These images are processed to create loops that give meteorologists a bird's eye view of our planet from space and provide information such as cloud cover, moisture, and where storm systems are located. Finally, radar is one of our most powerful tools. Radar works by sending out a beam of energy. This energy goes into the atmosphere until it hits something such as a raindrop, raindrop or a hailstone. This energy is then scattered back to the radar, and the radar processes the information and maps it has so that meteorologists can see the data. This data shows meteorologists where storms are located and how intense they are. We hope you enjoyed this educational video on different types of weather tools. Thank you for joining us.